Hey, what's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, today we've got a whole bunch of stuff on the table because we're gonna be talking about gear and rigging out cameras and specifically the a7 IV, but this doesn't just apply to the Sony a7 IV, this can apply to the Sony a7S III, the FX3, and dare I say it, other camera brands as well, because on a general idea, this can suit many different manufacturers. It really just depends on what kind of uh, camera rig you're setting up for a particular job. So this doesn't just apply to having a full camera rig as well. This could be the basics of just a camera and a gimbal, just a camera itself, a full chest rig, uh, easy rig, or just rigging this out completely with video transmitters, V-mount batteries, and the absolute works. And we're actually gonna be getting a few words from my mate Josh. He's gonna be talking about his camera build as well, or the reasons why he doesn't actually use a camera build, because there are some times where you don't actually physically need a camera build, and it's actually too much, and it doesn't actually fit in your workflow. So that's why we're gonna be talking about a whole bunch of different accessories. So stick around, because we're gonna start with the bare basics itself, just from the cage, all the way up to your full camera rig, V-mount batteries, video transmitters, and the absolute work. So this is probably gonna be a little bit of a long video, so please stick in there, or the timestamps will be below of different camera builds because uh, this could help a lot of people out. But if you do wanna watch the whole thing, kudos to you and thank you for supporting my channel. Okay, so rigging your camera out is a very popular thing, mainly for the fact that you can add a whole bunch of accessories that can actually help make your video camera perform, or mirrorless camera, perform the best it physically can perform. And for you to actually do that, you're gonna be adding a whole bunch of accessories on there, or sometimes just one or two different accessories, like for instance, the cage itself. So the cage is like the bare bones minimum that a lot of people start with, mainly for the fact that the cage allows you to put on a top handle, it allows you to attach a monitor on top, it allows you to attach a handle. So a whole bunch of different accessories that can actually help you get steadier shots or uh, monitor your camera settings a lot better, putting audio adjustments on there. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons why he would get a cage. Now I actually went for the A7 S3 cage by Tilter. And yes, I did actually do a video previously about the A7 S3 cage. And no, it doesn't fit the A7 IV perfectly. The A7 IV is just slightly too big. So I did actually have to file the edge off and, uh, and it fits. And don't worry, it's not gonna affect the integrity of the cage at all so that it performs as well as it would perform if I didn't shave it off. But if I didn't do that, it wouldn't fit in there, but fits perfectly fine. So this is the a7 IV with the cage on there right now. Now the second thing that I actually generally leave on there the whole time is this mount at the bottom. Now this is the PGY Tech quick release clamp and this allows me to attach it to a tripod, this allows me to attach it to my camera rig and this also allows me to attach it to a gimbal depending on the gimbal and the balance as well but sometimes I usually just put it directly onto the gimbals. But having that quick release plate does help with my workflow because a lot of the times I am on a gimbal, a lot of times I'm on a tripod, and a lot of times I want to rig this out onto that base plate. Now having a camera like this can suit a whole bunch of situations. So if you do have a strong enough gimbal, this can fit directly straight onto the gimbal. Now a gimbal and a camera is very good for a lot of people, specifically run and gun people who do wedding filmmaking, who do uh, corporate videos that don't need any extra extravagant lighting, that can be a very good thing to have. And if you're gonna be using the gimbal with the a7 IV, you're gonna be getting some really nice stable footage. And for some, that's all they pretty much need for their whole career. It really depends on the job. It's the right tool for the right situation. So you wouldn't actually use a hammer to put in a screw. There's a whole bunch of different tools that you can use that would be better to put that screw into the wood as opposed to a hammer, if that kind of makes a bit of sense. So the main gimbal that I use, I just did a video on this. This is the Feutech Scorp. This one works perfectly with my workflow, especially when it comes to undersling mode. This is a nice run and gun setup, just this and the camera itself. Now this is my buddy, Josh. He's gonna be talking about his camera setup and as you guessed it, he doesn't actually use many rigs. He actually returned one of his rigs for his a7 IV and he's actually gonna be explaining why he doesn't actually need a rig for his workflow. Hey Jason, thanks for the invite. 
this is my first time filming in 25 frames per second, so I feel like I'm in another country or something. <laughs> Anyways, I know we're here to talk about camera rigs, and I wanna talk about why I really don't rig up my camera very much, and the reason for that is they can get really heavy, and I don't go to the gym nearly as much as you do. <laughs> All joking aside, uh, I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to rigging out my camera, and I think a lot of it comes from my background because I got into filmmaking through YouTube and filming myself, and I was often just using a camera and a microphone, and that was it. So when I went to go start filming other people, uh, shooting mini docs and you know doing interviews and tours on people's farms and things like that, uh, I needed a camera that was more versatile, that had more audio inputs and stuff like that. And this is what I came up with. So this is my FX3. I have an XLR shotgun microphone into one input. I have the Sennheiser AVX wireless kit into the other, so really good professional audio. If I need a third input, I use the Rode Wireless Go into the third input on the handle. So if I need to record myself or someone else, I have that option. For lenses, I generally use the 24 to 70 G Master, which is, in my opinion, the most versatile lens out there. Uh, a variable ND filter on the front. The only thing I've added to this really was this handle extension from Small Rig. I think it just adds uh, a little bit more balance to the whole thing and gives it a little bit more rigidity. And if I'm doing a client job uh, and I need to boom a microphone or something like that, I can take this stuff off and plug it right in. Now, if I am just filming myself, I can just pop this handle off and put on a microphone like this. and swap out the 24 to 70 with the 16 to 35 and that's it. So I love these the simple setup here. The FX3 is great for this because I can use it for both filming other people and framing myself. So it's a great uh, setup for me. But lately, I've been using the a7 IV more than the FX3, but that's for another video. Thanks again, Jason. Back to you. So the next rig setup we're gonna be talking about is this Pretty extravagant piece of equipment. Now this is by Digital Photo. This is the Thanos SE. Now this one actually has a full chest rig and this is actually the control arm. So the whole idea of this is that you're going to be putting this onto the cage. You're gonna be putting your gimbal directly into this mount right here and you can pretty much film all day. Yes, it does take care of a lot of that Z axis bounce but the main thing that actually is a pro of this is that you can film for pretty much the whole day without any fatigue. So you're not gonna be holding the gimbals with your hands the whole time. It's gonna be taking a lot of weight and distributing the weight across your body. So that is a really, really good filmmaking tool, especially if you are a wedding videographer, if you do a whole bunch of uh, event videography and you're holding the camera for a very, very long period of time, this could be a really good tool to use. Now there are a couple of other accessories that you can actually utilize with this thing right here. You can see that I've got a clamp on here and a phone holder. So you can actually monitor your camera through your phone. You can use Monitor Plus, which is a fabulous app that you can have a whole bunch of features like uh, false color and histograms and stuff. Or you can just use the Sony app. That still works perfectly fine on here as well, which you can actually use tap to focus or object tracking on that. But other than that, the digital photo Thanos SE works perfectly fine as is anyway. Now this is the next rig that we're actually gonna be talking about now, and this is just the camera cage with the handle and a monitor. Now a monitor is obviously really good for monitoring your exposure and just catching things that you normally wouldn't catch from the small, what is it, a three inch screen at the back? It's a very small screen as opposed to a five inch screen. Five inch just seems about enough on the A7S III and the FX3 and the A7 IV. Seven inch just feels a little bit too big. I use a seven inch for the FX6, but you know, it kind of suits the workflow, kind of suits the balance of the camera as well. But having this one right here at the front actually suits workflow quite well. Now you're actually probably going to be needing a filter as well in the front so I use the Nisi variable ND filter. This is the true color one as well so there's no color shift in this but I generally chuck that one on the front and this is exactly how I would roll on a job. So it's very basic, it's very easy but this isn't specifically the best setup for me because you actually have to add a Sony MPF battery and that does tend to weight it a little bit funny. But before we get into powering this device here, we're gonna be talking about this front rig right here. So this is the Magic Arm by Nitsi. Now this is a really good Magic Arm, mainly for the fact that I've actually got this on the whole time. So I leave it on there and it's attached directly to the front of this handle. Now the reason why I like to have it on the front of the handle because it's directly in the middle of the camera. I'm not 100% fan of having it side mounted with this camera rig, it just doesn't feel right. But having this here allows me to do a whole bunch of different angles as well. So I can go left or right, up, down. It really depends on how I'm using it. And it's a very quick mount system as well. So all I need to do is unscrew it 
and I don't have to use that as well. So I can just have the camera by itself with the top handle. So now one of the great things about this Nitsi Magic Arm is that it actually has locating pins on the bottom there as well. So this one is actually the 3 8 mount. I've taken off on the Atomos Ninja. You can actually use a quarter inch adapter in there and just use the quarter inch adapter. But it's got little locating pins at the bottom. So when you actually have your monitor there, it's not gonna be sliding around. There's nothing worse than your monitor sliding around on that magic arm. And having those locating pins definitely helps with that. Now, when it comes to the HDMI cable, I've just got this really nice small thin HDMI cable, full-size HDMI, and a right angle adapter. Now this right angle adapter is pretty handy because essentially you plug it in there and the cable goes forwards as opposed to out to the side. So it really depends on uh, where you want these cables to be and if it's gonna be in the way. It really depends on the situation. Sometimes I just use the cable by itself. Sometimes I actually use that right angle adapter, but it really depends. You know, This is very cheap anyway, so uh, pick this one up and then you can choose when you're actually gonna be using this. Now, when it comes to the monitor, my main monitor is the Ninja 5. Now, I don't record in here, but you can actually do recording in here in ProRes. Now, you can record directly into an SSD, and then all you need to do is put that SSD, plug it directly into your computer, and away you go. You don't actually need any SD cards or anything like that. Now, if you do wanna go a little bit of a step up from here, you can get a side handle. Now, this is my favorite side handle for this camera rig right here because this is a varying angle side handle. It is attached by the NATO rail. This is by small rig, and it just goes onto the side, and it's very quick and easy to actually put on there. So. It's already on, and then if I am doing some low shots, I can adjust the angle of the handle right there and do my low shots. It really depends on how you wanna be holding it. But if you do some high shots, you can do that and adjust the angle as well, or it's just as quick and easy to take off because it is NATO rail. Now, this one is only designed for left hand, so you can't actually switch it to the other side and make it a right-handed one, uh, which kind of sucks. I do prefer having a handle on the right-hand side, but if you do prefer having handles on there on the left-hand side, this is probably the one to actually look into because of that varying angle is super, super handy. Now, another version of this is actually throwing the mat box on in front. Now, why would you need a mat box? The mat box is really good for two different reasons, having panel filters on there and the front French flag. Now, the front French flag can actually stop unwanted flares going into the lens and just washing out your image. It really depends on if you do want flares or if you don't want flares, but this gives you the opportunity to control those flares that go into the lens. So having that top French flag can stop that just by adjusting it like that. You don't have to use it. You can completely take it off if you want and just have it as is. But like I said as well, is that you do have the ability to use panel filters, which I use a lot. But I actually use the Nisi Black Allure Mist filters. Now this is the 1.8 strength. I've also got the half strength and the full strength filter as well. It's a little bit too much. The quarter is uh, probably the highest I would go. The 1.8 is probably perfect, which as most of you guys would probably know from your brand that you might use, 1.8 is that general sort of sweet spot. It really depends on the job as well. But having the panel filters is really good because if you do have a matte box, you can just quickly drop it in there and change it on different cameras as well. So if you are changing lenses, that can be become an issue if you do have just a certain size and you need those step down rings per whatever lenses you do have as well. But yeah, sure, you do have step down rings for these matte boxes as well, unless you get those ones with the rubber donut in the middle. When you actually change the lens, you don't actually need to adapt it because it's actually attached to the rails. Now this one is by Small Rig. I will link everything in the description below. This one is actually really good because it does have a few mounting points as well. And it does give you the option to mount it onto the rails down the bottom as well. But this one is quite good for smaller cameras. When it comes to the bigger cameras, you may actually wanna invest in the bigger version, which I also do have. And the great thing about that bigger version is you can actually stack filters as well. So if your camera doesn't have internal ND filters, you're probably gonna need to put ND filters in your panel filter. Like, I know the Red Komodo as a cinema camera doesn't have ND filters, so you're probably gonna have to use panel filters or your circular uh, ND filters. It really depends on your workflow with that one. 
Okay, so now we're gonna be talking about the rig that I pretty much always use, and that is this thing right here. Now this is a V-mount battery plate onto a rail system. So the main reason why I actually have this rig is that I can run everything off the V-mount battery. I can uh, power the camera, I can power the monitor as well, or a follow focus system at the same time, just through one battery. So I only have to worry about charging one battery. And this is 135 watt hour. And so this actually lasts pretty much a whole day shoot. So I'll never have to worry about running out of battery on a shoot, which is very, very important if you are run and gun on the fly or just don't wanna to have to worry about changing batteries every five minutes. This one, I have no idea what brand it is, but I'm gonna try and find it, link it in the description below. But it is great because it does have a whole bunch of ports down the side that you can run power out of. So it's got a USB power out, it's got eight volt, 12 volt, and 15 volt DC, which I actually power my Ninja 5 monitor through one of those DC powers out. And it also has a single D-tap one as well. So that D-tap actually runs through my dummy battery. So this is what powers the camera directly, chucking that straight in there in replace of the actual battery. Now the great thing about having an external battery for this camera is overheating because it takes a lot of the heat out. Battery is one thing that heats up quite a lot in a lot of different circumstances. But if you follow the previous steps that I've done in a few previous videos about the Sony a7 IV overheating, you probably won't get any of those issues. Okay, so if I am doing an indoor shoot, this is pretty much my main setup right now. I usually have the matte box on front so I can have that black allure mist filter on the front. The great thing about that one is it takes a lot of that digital sharpness off. It gives my highlights a bit of that bloom effect and it just creates a little bit more ambience to the scene. Now, if I do wanna go just that one little bit step further, I generally throw this on. It really depends on the situation, but having a wireless video transmitter could be make or break for some production, especially if you do have the clients on site actually wanting to see the feed. You can actually put this directly to a director's monitor or to an external monitor, wherever you put it. This can actually be paired with the app and they can actually watch it on their phone if they download the app and sync to that. So this could be good for clients who actually wanna see what they're paying for essentially at the end of the day. Now, once again, the great thing about having the V-mount battery is that you can power this one right here. Now, I generally throw the Hollyland Mars 400 Pro, mainly for the fact that I can power this directly through USB-C. Now, that USB cable can go directly into the USB-C and power that without an MPF battery. I try and get away from using as many batteries because it generally adds really uneven weight everywhere. So having that V-mount battery can actually power that and it just actually makes it a more compact setup. Now, the great thing about this A7S III cage is it has a cold shoe on I don't know, I guess you call it the corner. Yeah, it's the corner. It's got the cold shoe on the corner so I can put it directly on there and won't have to mount it anywhere on the top handle or on the side handle here. So it's a perfect mounting position. It's not in the way of anything. Uh, so that's really good right there. Now I do have these HDMI cables right here. These ones have the 90 degree angles already built in and it's quite short as well. So it doesn't get in the way of anything right there because you know you try and get the shortest cables possible to fit those certain situations. So the only issue about this matte box is that if you are outside, you're gonna need ND filters if you wanna shoot at low apertures and try and shoot at 1 50th of a shutter speed or twice your frame rate. Sometimes if I am outside, I won't use the matte box and I'll just use the ND filters on the front right there. Now, sometimes it really depends on the situation, but I'll pull the Easy Rig out and I'm able to put the Easy Rig onto the handle as well. The great thing about this setup is it actually is quite balanced quite well. So if I do have it on an Easy Rig, it actually is going to be balanced quite evenly. Now, the thing about the Easy Rig, it does take away a lot of the weight. So luckily, the IBIS and Active Steady Shot in here does still give you really nice stable shots. But like I said, the Easy Rig does allow you to film for a longer period of time, specifically if it is built out this heavy. So when it comes to audio options, I don't really record audio in camera, but if I do, it's generally on the FX6 and I've got XLR cables, but if I am actually recording it, sometimes I actually use the Synco G2. So that is almost like the Rode Wireless goes. So it's just a little square box. You can put it directly onto a cold shoe, attach it into the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, 
and away you go. That's perfect for your audio option. But if you do want to chuck a shotgun mic on here, there are a few different options that you can use, but it really depends on how you want to rig this out. But if you don't have that video transmitter, you can put the shotgun mic onto the handle because this handle right here has a cold shoe adapter. If worse comes to worse, you can put a cold shoe adapter onto your monitor and have the audio on top as well. So it really depends on how you actually wanna rig this out and where you wanna be putting that audio. But if you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try and answer them the best I can. So if you wanna check out Josh's channel, the link will be in the description below. He has awesome stuff on the a7 IV and other Sony content. Definitely subscribe to his channel and you'll get some benefits of watching his content as well. So that is it from me guys. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. Uh, everything will be in the description below just to make sure you guys have access to all these links and hopefully, you know, you've got some ideas on how to rig your camera. Like I said, this doesn't just apply to the a7 IV. This can apply to the a7S III, FX3, any mirrorless camera. It really depends on just the cage, but this can give you some ideas with the side handle, the monitor on top, the magic arm, the V-mount battery plates, video transmitters, base plates, quick release plates, all those kind of accessories that can help you in your filmmaking journey. Other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next one. All right, let's get it.